Welcome to our slash best of Redditor updates, where this woman can't decide if she's in the right or the wrong for refusing to bleach her hair for her friend's wedding. Am I the jerk for refusing to bleach my hair for a wedding? So, I have a weird problem, and after I told my boyfriend, he told me this sub would be the perfect place to get some help. So I, a 25-year-old woman, am meant to be in the bridal party at my friend Zoe's wedding in December 2024. A couple of days ago, she met with me and the rest of the bridal party to discuss what the plan was for hair, makeup, dresses, etc. At first, it seemed reasonable. She's going for a winter wonderland type of theme. So blue dresses, all in different shades, lined up as a gradient, with silvery accents, snowflake jewellery, and soft makeup. Even blue contacts for those of us without blue eyes. Yeah, the last one's a bit weird, but it's no big deal to me. I've worn color contacts for Halloween. The bit that ended up being an issue for me is that Zoe requested we all get our hair dyed. A couple of members of the bridal group are natural blondes with dyed ends, and so is Zoe, but she wants to go platinum for the wedding. But the rest of us are two brunettes, a strawberry blonde, she wasn't blonde enough, and a redhead. I'm one of the brunettes, and I'm the only one in the group who has never dyed or bleached their hair. I've considered it, but I can never stay settled on what I want to do, and I'd hate to spend money on something that I end up hating. On top of that, my mum, from ages 5 to 13, flat ironed my hair almost every single day. It really damaged my hair. I'm almost certain it's resulted in my hair being thinner than it used to be. I know that bleaching can also damage your hair, and I don't feel comfortable taking that risk yet. I told Zoe I wouldn't be able to dye my hair. She insisted it would be fine, as my hair seemed quite healthy, and she would be paying for the bleaching treatments for all of us. I again said no. Thanks so much, but I can't. I asked if I could just wear a wig, and she said no, that wigs are cheap and unnatural, and she wants us to have our real hair bleached instead of some cheap imitation for the day. After more back and forth, she told me I should go home and think about the fact that I'm ruining her vision and that I'd be ruining the photos and wedding video that she and her fiancé will be putting together for his grandparents to view since they won't be able to fly in from Argentina. I apologized, paid for my meal, and left. I really don't want to dye my hair, but I also don't want to ruin Zoe's picture-perfect day. I don't think I'm being difficult or wrong here, but am I? Okay, off the bat, I've got to say this sounds absolutely ridiculous. Dyeing your hair, bleaching your hair for someone's wedding, demanding that your bridesmaids do that, very, very odd. I mean, by all means, have a theme, sure. Have whatever color dresses you want. But demanding that your bridesmaids dye or bleach their hair, that's a bit much, isn't it? Also, OP, you are completely right. I, I know firsthand. I bleached my hair a few years ago for a forfeit. I'll put a picture on screen for those of you that didn't know this. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty crazy, but it did damage my hair. Like my hair felt bad. It felt like hay during the process, like during having that hair. And even afterwards, when my hair naturally grew out again, this color, it didn't feel great. It still felt like straw-like, hay-like. There definitely is lasting damage done. So I do not blame you at all, OP. But of course, this is our slash best of. Let's get in to the first update. All right, so this comes nine days after the original post. I met with Zoe yesterday afternoon and we talked things over. I pointed out a lot of things that were brought up in the comments and presented them as the concerns of me and a couple of friends of mine, and not the concerns of the millions that saw it online. Well, it turns out that she was part of those millions. Someone sent her one of the TikToks that my Reddit post was read in, and she's been thinking about things. She told me she felt a little embarrassed about this all being out there online, even if nobody knew who we are, and I apologized. I explained that I really didn't have many people who weren't involved in the wedding to speak with about this, and I needed the advice. She also apologized and said that she realizes now that the bleaching was a completely out of line request. She said that since she's only bleached her hair once, and because she's naturally blonde to begin with, she didn't know anything about the process for bleaching dark hair. I didn't know it would be so difficult, take so long, and could cause so much damage. She said looking back, knowing what she knows now, she feels like she was a huge female dog. I reassured her that she wasn't, she was just uneducated and passionate about something, and we clashed. We hugged it out and things are good now. About the wigs, there will be none. She's scrapping the group blonde idea. I convinced her that she would stand out far better if her whole bridal party wasn't blonde and that dark hair and red hair would work amazingly with her winter theme. The contacts are also being scrapped unless any of us decide we want to use them. 
They're a very piercing blue and kind of cool looking. About the grandparents. Zoe said Frank's family in Argentina isn't of German descent, so nothing to wonder or argue about. She was, however, horrified when she put all those pieces together and thought about how it looked. She'd really been thinking Elsa vibes, not Aryan Nation vibes, and that embarrassed her more than the story being out there by itself. She didn't even know Nazis fled to South America after World War II. Zoe has officially messaged everyone in the bridal party to let them know about the change of plans and to apologize for the outburst and the stress this put on everyone. She's also very excited for us to all come up with a new hair and makeup look and to go dress shopping. Also, those who asked if the groomsmen were being held to the same standard, I don't know. And after finally getting this whole fiasco over with, I didn't care to ask. Zoe and I have made up and everything is fine now. Sorry if this update wasn't the crazy story everyone was looking forward to. Okay, seems like a pretty standard ending, right? Um, well, you'd be wrong. Because although that is the end of the updates, there was one more edit that was posted at the start of this month, October. And it might just blow your mind. Let's get into that. So here is that edit. I considered whether or not I should post this because I feel genuinely freaking awful. But I think I need to just get it out there. Zoe's wedding has been cooled off. The engagement has been broken and there's no telling if Zoe and Frank will even have a relationship at the end of this. To keep things short, this is all secondhand from Zoe via text. Zoe went to Frank the next day to talk to him about everything. He'd been gone until the morning after she and I met up due to a work thing. Turns out three of his groomsmen, including the best man, have already started the bleaching process. It went well for two of them as they were both pretty light haired, though not quite blonde. His best man, Brandon, however, has orange hair now. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. In addition, it's patchy because he did it at home with a buddy while they were both drinking, and now he has to go into a salon to get it fixed. Plus, his hair already feels fried. Frank told Zoe that since half his side has taken the plunge, and because it effed up Brandon's hair, for the moment, that the rest of the bridal party, and he apparently singled me out by name, need to suck it the frick up and get it done. This resulted in a huge argument. Zoe called off the wedding and Frank ended the engagement. Zoe is sleeping at her parents' place and they've not spoken since. I feel awful. I know I have a right to boundaries and autonomy and stuff. I know this isn't my fault, but I feel like if I'd never made such a big deal out of things and just gone through with it, this never would have happened. Well, just when I thought we were gonna have a couple of chilled updates there, no. Uh, it's actually an edit this time, which destroys everything. OP, I do have to say though, don't for one second think that any of this is your fault. If these people, this couple, Zoe and Frank, were going to break up because of dyeing their hair or bleaching their hair, then I'm pretty sure they would have broken up eventually anyway. I mean, come on, if they're that fragile in their relationship, then it wasn't going to last. I wouldn't blame you. If anything, you've probably done them both a favor because if you're breaking up over someone dyeing their hair and not liking it, then um, yeah, it's not looking good for your future. Let's be completely honest. But there we go. Uh, what a start to this one. Let's get in to our second best of post. My boyfriend of eight years told me he wanted to open our relationship. I am a 28 year old woman and I met my boyfriend who is 29 many years ago through some friends. He was living in another place on the other side of the country. We instantly took a liking to each other and became boyfriend and girlfriend. In the first year of our relationship, it was distance. Both agreed that after I finished my schooling, I would go and live with him. I had to leave behind everything. Friends and family, a perfect job offering with an amazing salary with this company that I'd interned in in previous years, which I loved by the way, but I thought that he was worth it. So I moved to where he lives and everything was good. We talked about our future. Both agreed we get married at 30. We focus on our jobs and ourselves. We fought, but could never be mad at each other for longer than a few hours. We bought a house together with a nice yard the perfect home for our future together. Last night, while we were eating dinner, my boyfriend told me he wanted to talk about something. I said, all right, and we proceeded into the conversation. He started off by saying that he loved me and that I'm perfect to him. I thought he was going to propose to me. Instead, he told me that he is polyamorous, that he just realized that and that he wanted to open our relationship. I asked if I did anything wrong for him wanting to open the relationship, wondering if I didn't satisfy him enough emotionally and sexually. He said no, and then it's just who he is. I told him that I only believed in monogamy. I can't personally see myself with anyone but him. He told me that I was being ignorant when I told him I only wanted him. 
I backtracked into what I was saying and asked him if he'd already thought of another woman that he wants instead of me. He tried to deny it, but he said there was a woman that he'd met, that she's also Polly, that they never did anything and that I shouldn't worry about her. But I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to say, so I finished dinner in silence. That night, I chose to sleep in the guest room. I couldn't bear to look at him. I started thinking of all the things and opportunities I'd missed, like my dream job, my friends, missing life achievements of my nieces and nephews, and not spending enough time with my mother before she passed away. All of the eight years I had just went away. They left a sour taste in my mouth. I regret the life I had in the past eight years. I keep thinking of who would have been, what I would be doing. This morning, he didn't go to work because he felt like trash because I slept separately. So we talked about everything and I told him that I cannot be with someone like him That I didn't want to enter an open relationship. I told him I wanted to leave He started crying and said he couldn't change who he is. Why would I say that I regret our time together? I told him because he'd wasted it and our future together has just disappeared I told him it would take me time to learn to not love him anymore. I thanked him for the past eight years together He said he takes it all back and that he'll stop talking to the other girl that he doesn't want our relationship to end But I can't do that to someone I love I cannot hold someone back from becoming who they are if he is polly I don't care, but it's just not who I am. I've packed all the things that I own I'm gonna move back home live with a friend. I applied for a job that I actually like I'm sort of embarrassed to admit to family and friends why our relationship ended because it feels like I wasn't good enough for him I feel like I wasted my 20s for him okay that is the original post now before we get into the update first of all here are some relevant comments that are very pertinent to the story someone asked i wonder if he is also okay with you seeing other people and op replied when i asked him how he would feel if i saw others and bringing other men into our home he said he wouldn't mind and that we wouldn't bring a new person into our bedroom but into a guest room which felt super icky another comment which to be fair is quite a obvious one but maybe they didn't actually ever have this conversation someone said did you never have the monogamous first poly talk op replied the only talk we had was about us marriage and children only i never had the desire to pursue anyone in eight years it was only him i know what poly is i understand it but it's not for me yeah you know what i kind of agree with that i think it's a pretty niche thing to be polyamorous the majority of people aren't polyamorous so surely if you're talking about children marriage the future with just you two yeah it makes sense that you wouldn't outright ask that question it's kind of implied monogamy in general right so then let's get on to the update this was posted a month later the beginning of this month again october the first i thought i'd give an update of what happened it's been well over a month since my ex-boyfriend wanted to open our relationship i've moved away and now i have my own place my new job is much better than my last one everything's been good for me spending a lot of time with family When we told our mutual friends and our families why we ended our relationship, they thought it was a trashy situation and they just joined my side. About the house that I've recently purchased with my ex, we decided to put it up for sale and split everything evenly. I haven't talked to him since we broke up, but I've heard that he started dating the girl he told me about, which I knew was coming, so I wasn't really surprised. I'm not really in the mood for dating at the moment. I'll probably take more time for myself. In the end, I'm happy. I've learned a lot and everything has been good. You know, sometimes I wonder with these stories, right? How how can you be with someone for eight years and then suddenly out of nowhere, they just do this. They just spring this surprise on you. Surely after eight years of being with someone, you, you must be able to feel as if you really know them. Yeah, how can you if they end up doing something like this? It's insane to me. I also do think or kind of worry slash wonder whether this guy is even polyamorous at all or he just used it as an excuse because he was emotionally cheating on you with this woman kind of proven by the fact well at least the fact that he was emotionally cheating on you that very soon after you guys break up after you leave he's dating the woman i mean normally after an eight-year relationship you'd have a little bit of time off right they say that it takes half the length of a relationship to get over that relationship but no he's straight back on the horse i think that shows his true intentions also i need to just kind of remind myself here he called her ignorant because she identified as monogamous and wasn't happy that he was poly what that's the sort of bloke that we're dealing with here really So in that case, yeah, I kind of understand why OP is saying at the end that she is happy because you're never really going to be happy with that bloke long term if if you stay with him for sure. And at least now you know and you can move on with your life. Yeah, it's tough. 
I wouldn't see it as wasting your 20s or those eight years, but it's crazy. Out of nowhere, yeah, I get it. It does feel like those eight years or at least that eight-year relationship was for nothing. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Um, let me know if you're Polly down in the comments below. Hit me up on Instagram. It's on screen right now. You think I'm joking? I'm not. Uh, I may be joking, but in all seriousness, I enjoyed these stories. They were good. And uh, yeah, if you are Polly and you're in a relationship with someone and they don't know about that, moral of the story is probably tell them sooner rather than later. Or if you're not Polly and you're using it to lie about an affair you're having, yeah, crack on. <laughs>